Hi, everybody. Welcome to this little conversation. Um, I'm Davi Weasley. This is my colleague, Amy Johnson. Um, so I serve as the pastor for youth, young adults, and mission here at First Congregational Church of Bellingham. Um, I came out as transgender and genderqueer uh, a couple of months ago now, and we know folks have questions about what that means, um, and I am never one to pass up a congregational education opportunity, uh, and I'm never one to pass up an opportunity to hook in one of my friends and colleagues. So um, I'm going to have uh, Amy introduce herself, that's all right. Thanks, Davi. I'm so happy to be with you here today. Uh, my name is Amy Johnson, and I serve as the Minister for Sexuality, Education, and Justice in the national setting of the United Church of Christ. I'm Amen. really excited to be here. I have conversations about these topics and more all the time with folks, so super happy to do pretty much anything with you, so <laughs> super happy to be invited to have this conversation. Likewise, it's always a joy to collaborate. Um, I think I met Amy first when I was getting trained to do the Our Whole Lives curricula, um, first with middle school and high schoolers and then with older folks as well. Anyway, um, it's a joy. Um, let's see, um, and, and Amy's also here in the Pacific Northwest uh, conference with us. So that's kind of, kind of local, kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, we don't yet have kind of a list of frequently asked questions about gender identity. Uh, but what we do have is a few questions we've heard kind of second and third hand, um, questions that we've gotten directly. So, so we're going to start this, um, but we know that this video isn't going to be the end of any conversations. We hope that it'll be a continuing or a beginning of conversations. And so um, we've got some questions um, from folk in the congregation um, and elsewhere. Um, I'll share my answers. Amy will share her answers. Um, we will probably often disagree. I think that's a great thing about um, these rich conversations. Um, and we'll go from there. But we hope it inspires a lot more questions that um, folks at First Congregational can share with me or folks elsewhere can share with Amy or that you can reach out to your own pastors and other folks about. Amen um, to all of that. Yeah. Amen to all of that. I love that you started there and set that parameter because um, I'm going to be sort of moderator with these questions. And I want to say just right out of the get go, they are frequently asked questions. They may not yet be frequently asked questions at First Congregational, but they are frequently asked questions in my world. So um, so I think we're, we're in a good space. And um, I don't think there is any question on this list that has a definitive right or wrong answer. So, um, so the first one that we heard about is some people are wondering, what does transgender mean? And isn't that a great question? And isn't that just an amazing question that opens up that whole idea of language? So what would you say, Davi? Yeah, when, when I think of transgender, I, I think of it in a couple of ways. I think of it first as kind of an umbrella term of um, all of these different categories of gender that are outside of kind of a static um, assigned at birth male and female. Um, but I also think of it um, maybe more specifically, maybe less specifically, I don't know. I, I also think of it as um, uh, folks who have a gender that's different from the gender they were assigned at birth. Um, so if I was assigned, uh, if I was born and the doctor or my parents or somebody said, uh, this is a girl baby, um, and later on it became clear that um, I was a man and um, wanted to live in the world in that way, like that, that'd be one way to be in the transgender identity. So, so trans just meaning across genders, um, but meaning um, I, I, whatever gender I'm living in or whatever gender I'm called to, I'm, I'm a theologian, so I always think in terms of vocation. Um, yeah. Different from, from birth. How, how about you, Amy? Is that, what, what did I miss or? What, no, I think that's, you? I think that's really, I, I don't think I can add much to that. What I would say about language just in general is that it's really personal and it's really regional and it's community oriented and it changes. It's not a static thing. So, um, so what's really important is to respect how someone identifies themselves and the language that they use for themselves. It's not my job to say, you're not using that term transgender correctly, because it's not, it's not about me, it's about the, the person who is using that term and what it means to them. 
Yeah, and I think that's also helpful because it means like I can't assume very much. Like if I meet someone and they tell me they're transgender, I can't assume very much about their life history or um, kind of biological identity or, or anything like that. Um, and that, that's okay. Um, that's often a gift. And maybe they'll tell me those parts of their stories later on, but, but that's, right. I get to just let that be what it is. Yeah. yeah. And some people shorten it to say trans or trans with an asterisk. So you might see those things too. And that's, in my experience, usually is that, like you were saying, like a kind of umbrella term, just a general term to say. Yeah, or or I sometimes I sometimes I see kind of um, I don't know how to say this, but like kind of hybrid term, like not hybrid terms, but like trans man, trans woman, trans person, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, along those lines, the next question is, what does gender queer mean? So that's just a beautiful segue into into that, and that you know, gender queer is a term that um, has definitely become more frequently used in the years that I've been doing this work, which is, uh, gosh, 15 or so now. So um, queer is a word that people uh, used to use very in a very derogatory manner. And some people are reclaiming that as kind of a, an all-encompassing term of I just don't fit in the, the traditional binary box. But, um, but gender queer, you know, specifically around gender is something that, um, I guess it depends on how old you are and like what brief or long life <laughs> time span that is. But, but, um, but with my view, you know, it's, it's a, a relatively recent term that I've heard. So what else would you say about that? Yeah. So I, I think for me, gender queer signifies um, folks or often signifies, and for me certainly signifies folks who are um, outside of uh, male or female categories. Um, so, so I can't, in good conscience, I can't in, in authenticity like check a box that says I'm male or I'm female. Like there, there's there's this other identity uh, outside of that, or um, kind of a blend of those that feels more accurate to me. Um, you know, I I know I know some folks who experience that 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 gender queer is the right language for them. It's the right. Um, identity marker for them. Um, it's what they like write on the little form when the forms let you write in your own gender identity, which is great, by the way. Um, uh, I, I know other folks who say non-binary um, uh, or agender. There, there's other ways of uh, talking about ideas that are at least similar and, and that, I that I think have pretty, um, pretty particular differences. Like when I think about the differences between non-binary and genderqueer, like that's, that's kind of into the finer points of this. Exactly, um, yeah. And, and again, like Amy said, that, that kind of personal, like, like what calls to someone, how do folks identify? Um, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like I want to tell the Starbucks story. Are you okay if I tell the Please, Starbucks story? <laughs> so sure. uh, I was telling Davi that sometimes when I'm uh, in this, a- this, uh, this video is not supported by Starbucks, by the way. No, We're it's not. not. It. It's not at We're all. We're <laughs> open to that. We're available for corporate <laughs> not. Right. So, um, so my colleague, C.B. Beal, uh, developed this exercise and they, um, they have taught it. I've watched them teach it. And so- uh, and I have permission to use it. And I think it's just a really, sometimes for, it really hits for people about this idea of gender and how expansive it really is. So the, the first thing we would do if we were in a big group of people is I would go around the room and I would, I would tell all of you that we're driving on a road trip and we're somewhere in rural America and um, we stop and um, we go to get coffee and the only options are we can have the coffee black or we can have it light. We can have it with something in it like cream or sugar or something like that. So then I go around and ask each of you which what you would choose. And most of you, in my experience, would choose one or the other. A couple of you would say, I don't drink coffee, right? But most of you would choose something. And then I would say to you, okay, now I have a uh, unlimited Starbucks or insert your favorite non mega corporation coffee, uh, gourmet coffee shop here. Uh, and you can go and get whatever you want. And then when we go back around, people will have their specified drinks. Like for instance, I often order 
a um, coconut milk chai tea latte. Ooh. So yeah, and Dobby, do you know what you would have today? Just today, uh, I would love uh, I would love a decaf uh, mocha with almond milk and uh, oh man, the other day I had one. Somebody made me one with um, a little mint in there. Mm. Ooh, yum. Okay. So we go around and in my experience, most people know exactly what they would have. Um, and some people would say, a couple of people might say, I don't go to Starbucks or I still don't drink coffee, but I have my tea drink that I can get there. Um, a couple of people might say, I just have black drip coffee. But the idea is that if we take this and extrapolate it when we're talking about gender, the idea is that gender is much more like a gourmet coffee shop menu than it is about a binary. And yet when I gave the choice at first and said, these are your only two choices, most people will take it. But that doesn't mean that that's what they really are or what they really identify as, because it's much more like this giant expansive menu that has all sorts of continua on it that, um, that are a part of who each of us are as beloved, amazing, diverse children of God. And I think there's, you know, this is probably outside of the scope of today's little video, but for me, it's so um, interesting, but also so um, inspiring in some ways to learn about the ways that gender is constructed differently in other cultures, in other times in history, you know, uh, in, in other regions, like, and, and so like this idea that I certainly like grew up with, like the first time somebody told me there were more than two genders of humans, I was probably 20 um, or close to it. Um, but uh, that's particular to the kind of white US American culture that I grew up in. Sure. Um, if I had grown up in other places, it would have been very clear to me early on that there were three genders or five genders or seven genders. And, yeah. and even those are, are maybe static boxes that are limiting to some folks, but it's, um, it's a helpful reminder for me that um, what I take as um, you know, a thing that seems obvious or a thing that seems it has always been the case, like so many parts of my culture is just entirely um, constructed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, agreed. And I mean, there are specific cultures, there are Hawaiian uh, 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 tribes and Native American tribes and Southeast Asian cultures that have specific names for, uh, for different um, gender identities that are different from man, woman, or male, female, just specific. And I've seen at least five in one. So it's amazing to think that there's this whole world, right, that we think that we're exposed to everything and we're not. Who's telling the story, right? Who's telling the story? Yeah. And Amy and I so, are big nerds about this kind of thing, um, but we don't need to draw you all into all of that. Um, so let's keep going with the question. Yeah. Though. So I think that's a good uh, lead into another question, which is, it's kind of personal for you, Dobby. Like, what does your coming out as genderqueer mean for your church? I, and yeah. specifically, people are wondering, are you going to be preaching about queer people even more often? What about other people who aren't queer? How might the community respond? Yeah, um, I think that's a great set of questions. And, um, you know, there's a part of me that wants to answer just, yeah, what would be interesting <laughs> to find out, you know? Um, like, I do want to have a genuine, um, a genuine humility about how much I know about what this will be like for our congregation. Like certainly, like my hope is that it inspires a lot of good conversations uh, like this one, uh, maybe not on YouTube, um, but whatever. Um, uh, my hope is that it is an opportunity to um, learn more about one another when that's helpful. Uh, my hope is that it's one of the ways First Congregational Church of Bellingham continues to say, hey, we're a church where people are welcome. And that means that if you are a different sexuality or a different gender identity or a different race or class than we are, um, we want to make sure that you're welcome here. Um, now, sometimes we do really well at welcoming other folks and sometimes we really struggle, but we're a church. That's what it means to be learning and growing together. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see how um, my experience of coming out and my experience of my gender identity affects my preaching. You know, um, in terms of my preaching style, I think folks who know me will know that um, 
I try to be pretty led by the spirit in my preaching. Um, sometimes I am led astray in trying to follow the spirit and you end up with these long winded sermons that some of you have um, experienced. But um, I don't know like which parts of my experience um, the spirit is gonna tee up and invite me to share about. Um, I never want the topic of a sermon to be like Davi Weasley and how interesting or great or tragic or beautiful I am. I always want the topic of a sermon to be the abiding and powerful and transformative love of Jesus. Um, and sometimes that means telling parts of my own story. Um, so, so, so we're gonna see, I think. Um, and I think like, I love the question about whether this will lead to me preaching about queer people more. Um, I, I, preach about queer people a fair bit because there's a fair bit of queer people in scripture um, and I'm a lectionary preacher so you know the other day it was uh, the Ethiopian eunuch and like there's a person with a complicated gender identity there in scripture and you know we mostly talked about God's love and how it's inviting us in the midst of that scripture um, but but there there he was um, yeah. so um so yeah, I, I don't think that um, gender identity is the important or the most important part about my ministry. It'll be important for some folks. You know, I certainly um, can imagine folks um, wanting to have a conversation with a pastor who has this particular identity for a reason related to themselves or their kid or their grandkid or, or just out of curiosity, that's fine. Um, and, and I think it'll be interesting to see what it means for the community. Like so far, the community has been like, that's fine, Davi, nice to see you. Um, yeah. And I know that um, some folks in Whatcom County um, might be less excited about a trans pastor um, than I am. Um, and maybe we'll get to have some conversations about that. So um, I don't know the answer to those good questions. Uh, but I'm going to continue to be prayerful. And, and if you're part of my church or if you're the praying type, regardless, I invite you to be prayerful for all of us because it's going to be um, in some ways very familiar because um, I've been pastor here for a while now and in some ways very new because um, we haven't had a trans pastor yet. So we get to find out what that's like. I love you said we haven't had a trans pastor yet. That's beautiful. I also just want to say that. So speaking of like nerding out on things like I just finished my polity class. UCC history and polity. And I'm just so like recommitted. Sorry, can I just, so, so polity means like the way that the church is structured and the way it relates to like denominations. And like, it's like, a, it's like, it's like local government for churches. It's like, just cause polity is a church word. Okay. So thank you. And I'm, I'm struck by this, um, this deep commitment that the founders of the United Church of Christ and all the way through our history have had to this idea of covenant, meaning that we might not, for me, it, how it relates to this conversation is that we might not all understand each other. We might not understand everything about Davi. We might not understand everything about Amy. We might not understand everything about ourselves, but we're committed to stick with each other. We're committed to continue to having conversations, even if we don't figure it all out. We're committed to being a community together. And so that's what I invite you, anybody who's thinking that question of like, what about me? How's this gonna affect me? Like, I hope that what it does is draw your circle even wider and, um, and bring you opportunities for more community. That would be my hope for you all. Amen. So you ready for another question? Yeah, let's do another question. Okay, this is, this is, I think this is a fun one. If we get through these fast enough, we'll have time for the unicorn. Okay. <laughs> so will your appearance change? And will I notice the differences? Like, are you going to start wearing a dress or a wig? And is that why you've always worn nail polish? And is that why you have long hair? Um, <laughs> I'm wearing nail polish right now because it was Pentecost and I had to bling it up a little. Awesome. You know, I love this question. Um, a friend of mine, when they're like doing a talk or whatever, they're always like, that is my favorite question just for whatever the question is. And there's definitely a part of me that um, has that experience. Um, there's a wise pastor friend of mine that I talked to um, before I came out, but when I was in the midst of really wrestling with 
Um, how do I want to hold this gender stuff? What is God calling me to in terms of this gender stuff? Um, how do I want to identify? And, and, and even this question of like, I mean, what do I want to look like? But more like, how do I want to dress? How do I want to do my hair? Like the, um, um, the kind of like fashion and wardrobe and, you know, all of these pieces that all of us have, um, whether we spend a lot of time thinking about it or spend hardly any time thinking about it. Um, and I was like, how do you, and, and I like experience her as a person who is like, I, I like the way she dresses. She seems to like the way she dresses. I was like, how do you do it? She's like, well, in the morning, I stand in front of my closet or whatever she has her clothes in and I pray. And God says, wear this. And, you know, some days I do. And sometimes I'm like, no, God, I'm not wearing that. And, I, you know, um, but that's the invitation. And so what I've been doing more and more is um, when I'm um, in my closet or even when I like go to the store and, and I'm like digging through Goodwill or whatever, you know, to, to pray and to see where is my heart leading me and where is my sense of the spirit leading me? Um, and the other day, like my sense was like, God is like, just, just go to work. You don't just go, you don't need to worry about it. I mean, wear something, but, um, but, <laughs> but something like, really good. that's good. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. good rule stuff. Um, but sometimes it's like this. Um, and I don't know whether that's about somebody else. I don't know whether that's just about my own experience of myself. Um, but I do want to be a person who is more and more paying attention to the way that God is drawing me. Um, and I want to pay attention to what God is inviting me to eat and drink. And I certainly want to pay attention to what God is inviting me to say and not say. And so I think I want to be paying attention to what God is inviting me to wear. Um, so, you know, that's beautiful and everything. And if I was the person who asked this question, I would be really frustrated by that because it means I know like what I will wear a year from now or six months from now. Um, and I think there's a, um, there's, there's power in that and, and there's, um, that, that can be troubling. Um, I can imagine it being really comfortable to know like, oh, like, yeah, this is my pastor. They look like this. They mostly wear this set of things. Like they're gonna keep that X-Men poster on their office wall until they retire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, and, and so it means that like, you know, maybe there'll be certain kinds of stability in my um, fashion. Like I probably won't ever look that cool, let's be honest. But, but I think that we'll have to find our sense of stability and our sense of stability with one another from other things. Um, in the same way that like, I don't know what aging is gonna be like. Like, I don't know how much hair I'm gonna have for how long and what color it's gonna be, you know? Um, and, um, it is a sweet thing. I love that, that language of, of covenant that Amy brought up. Thank you for that. It is a sweet thing to be in covenant. It is a sweet thing to be community in community with folks um, in the midst of change. Um, and I know all of us have experienced so much change in the past uh, 14 months. Um, and maybe many of us are ready to have like no more change for a while. Um, and some of us have some control over that and others less so. Um, I know that the spirit is present in the midst of change. Um, I um, some days am like, oh, what is the spirit going to invite me to wear today? I hope it's something easy. Um, right? I, I don't have to iron. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was gonna say, one can imagine that I will not wear a lot of things that require ironing, but I don't know. I, I will try to be faithful to the spirit even if, if she calls me into such a thing. Um, but, but there are other days and, and I, feel, um, I feel a calling towards the kind of energy that says, what gift do you have for me today? In the same way that I might you know, go to, go to the coffee shop and say, what gift do you have for me? Or stand before my fridge and say, what gift do you have for me? Or certainly open up scripture to prepare a sermon and say, what gift do you have for me and my people? So 
That's my, I, I, I will also name that at First Congregational Church, we tend to wear preaching robes. So one can certainly make the argument that I've been wearing a dress to worship for like the last three years. Um, and no one has particularly mentioned it, but that's, that's again, that's that cultural, like, does it count as a dresser? Exactly, right? I'd like to offer something as a hope again for for all of you, anybody who's watching this, anybody that's at First Congregational. My hope is that you will see a difference, that what you will see is somebody who is growing in their authenticity and integrity of who they are and who they were created to be. And that that's an invitation also to you to look at everyone in your community and your congregation with a new eye for that authenticity of who they are, who they are in their soul, regardless of what they're wearing or what their hair looks like, or if it's matted mess, or if it all fell out or makeup or not, any of those things that you are invited to use this experience to be really in touch with your own authenticity and to watch that blossom and Dobby and people around you. Amen. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, we have one more question, which is where can we go to learn more? So is this where I throw up the unicorn on the screen here? <laughs> well, well, maybe. Yeah, we can, we can talk about the unicorn here. I mean, I, I do want to talk about other of uh, um, like, so here's Amy and Davi, and we're like talking a little bit about what we think it means to be transgender. And um, that is like, you know, both of us are good to talk to about that. Um, and that's like a bad place to stop. Um, so, so, totally. So, so, you know, like, I, I think there's so much to learn, um, maybe especially these days about what it means to be transgender or genderqueer, um, what it means to be non-binary, what it means to just be doing kind of a critical examination of, uh, gender, even as a, uh, what I would call a cisgender person. So a cisgender person is someone who has the same gender that they were assigned as birth. Um, um, there's, there's so much. Um, and I just wanted to like take an opportunity to see if Amy had particular things like, like we can go right to the unicorn, but now I'm talking about this. I don't know. Um, we're, we're just, we're, we're going to tease the unicorn. We're going to have to put we're the not, unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I would say, I would say there are so many things, like you said, and there are people can do like an entire advanced degree sure. in studies about gender. So any resources that, that I have are, you know, things that are not the be all and end all of anything. And it really depends on what you're looking for. Like, are you looking for a kid's book? Are you looking for a parent book? Are you looking for a, a clinical book? Are you looking for a book about puberty and trans? Are you looking, you know, there's just, there's so many different um, categories. There isn't just like, here's the transgender book. You know, it's just not that, that's just not a thing. So, um, so what I would say is if you have questions about a particular thing that you're interested in, feel free to reach out to myself, I mean, if you wanna be a resource as well, Dobby, and, and feel free to reach out to me. Um, the best, easiest way on here to, for me to tell you is to email me at owl at ucc.org. And, um, and we'll, we'll find out, and certainly if it's something that I don't know, I have plenty of people to reach out to and ask as well. There are, um, there are just tons and tons and tons of resources. And certainly our whole lives is one, but it's not particular to trans to trans or gender, it just encompasses gender in the holistic education of, of uh, people in terms of, of what our sexuality is as a holistic part of who we are. Um, so I'll just name the last two good books I read about uh, gender identity. Um, <laughs> that's how I do presentations, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I really like um, Susan Stryker's Transgender History. Um, my friend Josh Soretti recommended this to me. Um, it starts in about uh, 1940, 1945. And so it's about the last 80, 100 years. Um, and it's just was fascinating for me to watch how um, public conversations and private conversations about gender and transition um, and culture were changing uh, and, and kind of the fights in the midst of that and the victories in the midst of that. 
um, and still continuing. Um, and then this one, I'm just partway through, but it's really colorful and I like it. It's called Seeing Gender um, by Iris Gottlieb. Do you know this one, Amy? Um, I don't. I, I have another one called the, I think it's called the Gender Book and it's got this cool wheel in it and it's very well, I've heard of that one. well. Yeah, um, that's a fun one. Trans yeah, so is another great one. It's a book of essays. So, so this is some like overviews of like different constructions of gender, but then also nice. like profiles and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Cool. Yeah. And, and I also want to shout out uh, in town here, um, there's the Queer Youth Project, which supports all kinds of LGBTQ plus um, young people uh, up to about 24. Um, and there's also PFLAG. Um, so the Queer Youth Project is out of Northwest Youth Services. Um, PFLAG, Whatcom County is easy to find. Um, and they have a ton of resources, especially for parents of transgender young people, but um, they're just a great community resource that I always, th those are my starting places always um, for resources. Great. All right, you wanna see a unicorn? I wanna see a unicorn, always. <laughs> okay, let me get it up here. So this, um, this was created by, oh yeah, there we go. Um, this was created by a, um, a trans uh, student union group. And um, what's, what I really love about this is that um, it was created by trans people and that it isn't binary, it's a continuum. So you can look uh, over here where it says like female, woman, girl, and there's a different scale for male man boy and there's a different scale for other genders if somebody identifies that way and you can just move this you can put your pronouns up here you can put what your preferred name is here and you can move this to show like how much you identify on any particular um, continuum gender expression is about how we express our gender. So those are kind of those things in that last question, like, how are you going to wear your hair? What are you going to wear? Are you going to wear nail polish? Are you going to wear a tie? Are you going to grow a beard? Like all those things are kind of ways that we express our gender. And then even with all that variation, we still really only have three terms that we use to describe sex assigned at birth right now. And that's female, male, or intersex, which is um, when uh, it's ambiguous for some reason, either genitalia or hormones or chromosomes are ambiguous. Um, and then down here at the bottom, the physically attracted to and emotionally attracted to, again, go on these um, continuum. Are you physically attracted to women? How much? Men? How much? Other genders? How much? And about emotionally attracted, because it's not all about physical attraction. Who, who do you have those emotional connections with as well? So you can customize this in any way that you want. And you can send it to somebody with a share button if you want to let them know who you are today. But it's kind of a fun, um, a fun uh, uh, tool to explore about gender and to learn a little bit more about it. Um, and um, if you just Google or search, again, not sponsored by Google, <laughs> I think we should have Google and Starbucks sponsor our next uh, webinar. <laughs> Tommy, uh, you can just search interactive gender unicorn and you'll find the link to this. So thinking about a little rainbow here, super cute. Gender expression is the green. That's how every, how, uh, how they express themselves. And then this is who they're attracted to, these hearts right here. So. Yeah, and, and I think it's a lovely way of remembering that, um, gender and sexuality are certainly related for a lot of folks, um, but they're different things and they're different conversations and different different parts of the unicorn, as we say. Yeah, I, I often say like these three here, this sex assigned at birth and gender expression and gender identity, those are all about me and who I am. And then these other things are and about um, my relationships, right? To whom am I attracted? To whom am I in relationship with? So. To whom am I in relationship with? That was way too many people. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, what I mostly hope for you all is that you will continue to have questions and that you will ask them and that you will continue to be in covenant and community with each other and to see each other and love each other's authenticity and to really look for that in each other. That's beautiful. Thank you, Amy. Um, I uh, we should go in a minute, I think. But um, I thought of a question someone asked me the other day. That can I? Yeah. Can I 
pop yeah. in a last minute. Um, so they asked me about uh, my pronouns, which are they and them and theirs. Um, so like, oh yeah, Davi Weasley, they went to the comic book store and they were sad because the comic book store is still <laughs> closed because of COVID, but they were able to get their comic books via special order. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, that question. <laughs> That love it a little, you got a lot of that in there you got a lot of pronouns in there yeah, yeah. And, and um they were pointing out that it can be confusing and it can be challenging and mm -hmm. um i think the first time i had a friend who uh uses they and them pronouns it was challenging and it uh it took some time to learn um what, one thing that is like a little bit helpful for me is um to remember that like i was actually using they pronouns in a singular way before anyone ever invited me to because you know um the example i saw someone use was uh oh someone lost their wallet i wonder if they're looking for it um and and some people might say someone lost their wallet i wonder if he or she is looking for it um but um many folks just uh, in in less formal context use sure. they when when we don't know the gender of who we're talking about um mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so, and, and I'll just say like, like I, I know that many folks, it's important to be called by the right pronoun. Um, I know that like folk are going to like use other pronouns for me by accident. Um, and if that happens when I'm around, you can maybe just start using they pronouns. You can say, oh, sorry, and move on. Um, it, um, people will have different preferences around this, but, but just for me, like I like to just, I like it when folks call me the pronouns that I like. Um, when they don't, I that's okay, I get it. Um, and, and I like it when folks are moving towards that. Uh, so so if it's uh, 2031 and you're not using they that part, I mean, <laughs> we might have to have a conversation, but um, that's that's the clock. Yeah, so, can, I, can I add something there? Yeah, please, I don't know. As, what else as a person who identifies as cisgender, yeah. I know that, um, well, here's what, here's what I think not to do don't like totally freak out and totally not talk to Davi because you're afraid you're going to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, don't do that. Just know that language is deep, deep in our brains. I have misgendered and corrected myself about someone in the same sentence. I'm talking about a friend and say, she, no, they, you know, um, and, uh, and what's important is, I think, like you were saying, Davi, is to be on a forward um, movement and to know that it's okay if you're uncomfortable. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be comfortable. That's not where our growing edges are. Our growing edges are uncomfortable. So that's a good thing if you're feeling discomfort, but don't let it um, hurt your relationship with someone because you're worried about what, what word you're using or it's going to come out of your mouth. Cool. Um, do you have any other last thoughts, Amy? No, I think I said what I wanted to say. Again, I just really wish for you to be in community and authenticity with each other. Yeah, and thank stay. you so much. Thank you so much, Amy. And um, I'm sure we'll have more conversations like this. Maybe they'll be up on YouTube or maybe they'll be uh, Zoom workshops or maybe someday in person. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> the thing that I'll say is, um, you know, for me, part of this journey has been about um, being in the company of mystery. Um, like, like that question about what is this gonna look like for the congregation? Like, I, I don't know. Um, and I don't know a lot of who God is calling us to be. Um, but there are things about who God is that even in the midst of all of God's mystery, I know to be true. I know about God's love. I know about God's grace. Uh, I know that God calls us to be community together. And so I hope that when things feel really mysterious, um, we can, at least sometimes, um, take a breath and be present to that mystery and see what it has to teach us. Um, and I hope that we'll have a lot of good conversations. So I could talk all day about this. I will not <laughs> talk this day all day about it. Um, but thank you again. Um, thank you, Amy. Um, I, I, I don't know who's gonna watch this. So let's, can we have a little prayer? Do you mind if I say a little prayer? Oh, please, please, please. Um, God, thank you for this day and this chance to be together. God, um, bless our questions, the ones that God answered here today and the ones that continue to burn within us and the ones that will bubble up next week or next month. 
God, may we be a community of believers and doubters and questioners who can hold space for mystery. Lead us in this season and in all the gifts of the days to come. In your many names and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording here, uh, and I'll look forward to talking with you all soon.